I am so excited to be here today with my friend and client, Ali Craig. As many of you know, as the owner and founder of Hashtag Legal, I work with a lot of different clients in a lot of different industries um, and for a lot of different types of legal services. Um, Ali and I have worked together for a long time and when I started to think about creating this video series where we could talk about the business lessons that many of my clients and industry leaders have learned through the pandemic, Ali was one of the first people that I thought, to, thought of. She has so many businesses. They all are interconnected. They all make perfect sense. We've worked together for quite some time. I'm a huge fan of hers. So I was very excited when she said she would come on and join me for this chat. Um, I want everybody in the audience to have the benefit of the experiences that I have working with my clients and the amazing knowledge that they have. So I'm hoping that we can give you a little bit of insight into how business leaders are dealing with the changes that we're facing. So thank you for coming on, Allie. Of course. I love you too, girl. Like, come on now. Anything. <laughs> Tell everyone who you are and all about your businesses. So my name's Ali Craig, and for the last 22 years, I have worked with fellow entrepreneurs from Main Street to Wall Street, and that's not just a slick line, it's the truth of it all, and help them build amazing luxury brands, because the truth is that what most of us are selling are not essentials, and this pandemic is really showing the fact that what our offer is, is not necessarily essential, not essential, but that's actually a really good thing that we're a luxury item, and most people don't see it that way. But yes, I do have lots of businesses. I have a production company, a network that's on Apple TV and Amazon Fire, Roku, and all those platforms. I have a publishing company for female entrepreneurs. We have different certifications and different trainings for people. And they're all around being an entrepreneur, mainly being a female entrepreneur and a successful female entrepreneur and really understanding what that adventure truly looks like because there's just an awful lot of misinformation out there and buzzy things that sound good but after two decades of doing this I've never met that person who you know goes from zero to six figures in a month and and the social stories that that comes along and the struggles that makes when the misinformation's out there really is frustrating to me so I started with my branding company and every other business that's come along the way has been built out of a need to serve my audience and to serve my clients to help them up level their business and their brands and their growth and she is so good at it. And you see things in such a completely different way than most people do um, because of your background. So what's been the biggest surprise since this all happened? This isn't really a surprise on many levels because part of what I've always done, if you're looking at intelligent influence and impression management, which is one of our brands, or you're even just looking at neurohuman branding and modern luxury branding is crisis management. Mm -hmm least sexiest thing to sell and most people when I'm like they're like oh let's redo our brand and I bring up the idea that would you like to create a crisis management plan right now no one says yes and it's in these moments that they kick themselves for saying you know no to the offer of a crisis management plan because there's always going to be a crisis either directly in your life in your brand in your industry or in this case in the world at large and when you don't know how to prepare for it you start doing stupid things. You start acting like an animal in a cage. And we've all seen animals in cages. They don't act at night. They go a little cuckoo. And you can see a lot of brands doing that now. So from my brand perspective, I was very much on many levels set and ready for some type of crisis. Didn't think it was going to be a pandemic though. And of course, there's some logistics that we all had planned. Like my publishing company, we, my third book was supposed to come out on April 7th still going to come out, but the 12th City International Book Tour that was going to go along with it is going to be pushed off until those dates are set again and we can travel again and that can actually happen. But to have a total like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say or do, crisis management plan in place, you just start following and doing work. I'd like to add to the list of least sexiest things, legal services, because it's, we're in the same boat. There are people <laughs> right now who either one, didn't want to deal with it before and are now panicking mm -hmm. because their contracts don't help them at all because they didn't anticipate the worst case scenario or the people who are throwing products out there and not willing to do good terms and conditions, not willing to put the work in or the investment in because they're desperate to make money. And there's where mistakes happen. Well, the desperateness like that, yeah. 
biological human nature side, the franticness, the fear. I mean, we all get it. We're all experiencing, we're all human beings. I mean, and that's the thing that a lot of people in the media likes to tell us we're oh so radically different. No, we're oh so radically similar. And when we pause and begin to look at it logically, we can not just create and hold space for other people, but we can begin to really not be reactionary and be very thoughtful and intentionally choose and realize what's really at play. Yes, there is an issue happening. People are being affected, lives are being affected, health is being affected, economy is being affected. True. But the mass hysteria media of lack, the mass hysteria media of just constantly the negativity, the one-sidedness of the story, in not giving you the full breath, they're using your biology and your subconscious mind to their advantage. And so many people are just being the sheep falling off the flipping cliff and they're doing that and they're going to destroy their brands in the end. Because yep. often when we're in these crisis modes, just like you were saying, people are like desperate to try to make money. So they're just throwing out stuff. that's not the right quality. Don't have terms and conditions in place. Don't have their legal side in place. Probably don't have their intellectual property in place either. Mm -hmm. And what they're going to do is they forget to realize life is more than just this moment yes. and so their brand has made prior and the impressions their brand will make in the future all of that past present and future are all going to be how your audience views your brand and they're going to look at you in your in your totality of it all the mm -hmm. whole of it all and how you're acting now so this crazy loony like just kind of throwing stuff out there bit is going to be a negative impact on your brand because you lost your consistency in your message and the consistency of you as a leader. And your audience isn't going to say, oh, well, she was overreacting in this moment to the pandemic that was going on. No, they're going to say, she was just trying to get my money. She's just money hungry. So if she's money hungry, it. she'll be money hungry everywhere else. Yes. I, oh my gosh. I could not agree with everything you're saying more. Like, I understand it. I understand fear makes people do funny things. But... We're all there. We're all in the same yeah. boat. We all can't react that way and have life or your business be successful and overcome this. I mean, far too many people, because I've been doing this as long as I have, and AOL dial-up was a thing when I started. And Me too. <laughs> you know, like websites were like custom coded one color, HTML. So like, you know, I've seen the evolution of everything and people forget to realize that the truth about all this is that we're still human beings and we're still relationship centered. And when you act stupid, people really do remember. It's so true. So what's the one lesson you wish you knew before this pandemic started? Well, the one thing that it's not actually a lesson before, but the one thing I wish I would have, I don't want to say prepped more, but kind of surprised me on some level and on yes and no, because again, a lot of what my branding does and a lot of what my businesses do are all deal with the psychology of human beings. So I get that we are really illogical and we're highly influenced beings. So, you know, one thing that I am seeing though is that of course, a lot of fear. Clients freaking out because of the unknown and we can't reschedule the photo shoots or we can't reschedule the video shoots or we can't reschedule the shows that were in production to go and, you know, visit them in their locations and shoot for them. We just can't reschedule it yet. We don't have dates. So right. there's that kind of fear and uncertainty because everyone loves a good date. And the other side of a lot of vendors and whatnot who are freaking out because, oh my God, their income streams would have been tight before, but now they're crazy. And so, you know, they're not willing to deliver the work, but they're wanting to deliver, they get the money delivered to them. So they want me to pay, but not deliver the work. And I can understand their fear on a, you know, step back human perspective, but from a perspective, I still need to protect my brand yes. and I be intelligent about how I move forward on these relationships because how I act today sets me up for how the future will be on a logistical level, but also on an energetic level of how you're showing up in your business. And so that's one reason why when people make some outrageous claims of like, I need to be paid now and I, you know, that kind of stuff. I love that our relationship as you're on my legal team per se, um, I can just pass it off to you and say, look, like here's, here's the black and white of it all. You know my intention is to be fair at everything, but this isn't in alignment with the agreement. I get the pandemic's happening. Where can we go? You deal with it because there's enough support I need to hold, not just for all my businesses and all my staffers and all my clients, 
but on what needs to happen for them, you know? So I love that I'm able to just have you take that over and just put your wisdom on it and know that our intentions are in the same alignment and we can make a resolution that can hopefully satisfy everyone. I love what you're saying because it's so true. Nobody's thinking a minute in front of themselves. And there's a very big difference between taking everything day by day, which I fully agree with, we do need to take everything day by day, but you also do have to think about the long-term ramifications of the decisions you're making today. Well, and the one thing people aren't doing is everyone's getting on social. Like people I don't oh. see on social are getting on social. And this is where having a good crisis management plan comes into effect because we as human beings tend to follow, we tend to mimic. And so as we see other people increase their yes. use, getting on social, we see more media talking about that we feel like, oh, we have to do it too. And sometimes the best plan when it comes to crisis management is for you not to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> that going into it. So you'll notice that like, I'm not saying anything on my brands about it because this isn't the time for any of my brands to speak to what's going on because we're not at the, now let's fix it. Because everything I do is about, now let's take action. Yeah. I take action. But the problem is, is that because people are feeling like, I need to talk about this. Let's talk about the quarantine. Let's talk. Number one, no one cares. It's so true. The problem is that, you know, these impressions add up and they don't, they, they're forever. So yeah. when, so back in the 1970s, the average professional would make 50,000 impressions a month. Hmm. So 50,000 impressions a month saying hi to Johnny at the, you know, water cooler, saying hi to Sarah at the meeting, like whatever it was, you know. Today, the average person who is on social media personally and professionally makes 50,000 impressions a day. And with our in-person oh media right now, we're making more. We think this is just in the moment. All of these add up to say who we are when it comes to our personal brands, but also who we are when it comes to our businesses and what we're representing. And so all of that will add up. So when all of this is done and passed, it's these moments that can come back and either support where you're going and support your bigger vision in life or bite you in the butt. Yep, I totally People agree. Looking past that and they're just thinking, I need to be on here. I mean, like I am texting clients that I'm like, I don't know why you're on this right now. This is not a platform we advise. I don't know why the hell you're talking about this. Don't, you're going to screw all this up. Your choice to take the advice wouldn't do it. Right. I totally agree. Yeah. This is a I, business, I, you know, yes. come on. This isn't your personal best friend or your mama. That's really, I think there's so much blurring of lines because access, it's so accessible. It's so easy to hop online. And, well, and when about you blur you those lines, those are long-term lines. Yes. So like, you start getting too personal. And this is yes. a big problem a lot of people have with social media. They get too personal with their audience. So their audience, they're their clients, think we're best friends. When you're, yeah, oh. you're a best friend, guess what best friends don't do? Pay. That's what you do a favor for. Best friends. <laughs> to, you know, stay up late at night and, you know, help them do whatever. That's what your best friend's for. So you messed up your structure of having a buying audience in the end, because they don't look at you as the expert. They look at you as the equal. Right. Equal is never going to get you money. That's so, 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 so true. So what has been the most important resource to you as you're navigating these waters? Relationships, which yeah. is an important resource, period. Period. Yes. People, I, I love the newbies. You can tell the newbies in the entrepreneurial online spaces because they're like, oh, well, relationships aren't that important. Like, like they don't respect it. They're, they're like kind of like the burners. They use you and they burn you kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, you poor, poor, sweet soul. You're going to realize that's the stupidest move you've ever made. Yes. Because I have relationships with people that I met on speaking tours, uh, media context I've met years ago. And it's like, you never know where those relationships go. Right. So it's not that you need to be best friends with them, but you stay in touch. You say hi, you follow their posts, you like their comments. You're respectful. Yeah, you're just a normal human being. And you say, I think what's cool what you're doing. Hope all is well with you. Yes. Like relationships are what's going to get everyone through this, especially when it comes to getting back to work. Because relationships are going to be like, hey, you know what? This is where I'm at right now. I may need X. Can we work something out? And you're going to be willing to make a workout situation really work. Yeah. Have a relationship with them. 
and you know them on some level. I totally agree. So how are you approaching communications any differently between staff and clients? For me, it's the same because my staff and my clients are across the globe. So it's still Slack. It's still Zoom. And, you know, a lot of my branding work I like to do in person, but that's, I've always designed my business that way because changing the environment really helps help brands see the solutions to the problems that they're having. And mm -hmm. also being in person, there really just is the biological energetic connection that yes. we fundamentally need as human beings. Yes. And so... You know, that is maybe a little bit on hold, but I would rather keep it on hold than take it off the table because Zoom meetings are great for some practicalness of it all, but when it really comes down to creating, it's amazing what you can create when you're sitting right next to somebody and you're working together and, you know, the energies are just, you know, fueling you basically. Yes. Oh my gosh. I so agree with you. In person is so critical. There is nothing you can do online that will mimic the feeling you get when you sit down and have a really good meal with someone. Some of it's my, amazing what you can accomplish over oh a meal. Gosh, like. Some of my <laughs> best connections, we're literally not talking about business. We were talking about ourselves, our lives, when you feel connected with people. And you can do that in a way. You can have in a client relationship with somebody where you guys truly connect that is different than being best friends. And you don't realize yeah. that nuance until you, you really do it. And I think, frankly, it just comes with experience. It comes with experience and also comes with respect. Yes. That respect of your own professional level yes. and respect of other person's intelligence as well. And that I think is very lacking because I know a lot of entrepreneurs, we have the self-doubt, the imposter syndrome and all that. And when you're struggling with that, it's hard to then respect other people's <sighs> And so therefore the relationships do be more friends than more professional, you know, working style relationships. And then like we were just a couple weeks ago, which feel like decades ago on some level in Palm Springs. Yeah. And you know, what's so great about having those moments to work together is they create bigger memories. They create bigger experiences. And why I love it so much when it comes to branding is I'm always asking when you're rebranding business, or a brand, creating a brand new business, you're asking someone to step into who they want to be on a new level, but they haven't done it before. So they don't have the subconscious memories or habits created to actually organically do that in a seamless and effortless way. So you have a lot of subconscious sabotaging because you have the social stories, you have the habits, that old habits that come back that inhibit them from stepping forward. But when we're together and we're in a new environment, you're able to then have those experiences once and when you do it once, your subconscious mind realizes I can do it again. So that way when my clients are back home or you're back home, you know, you can repeat that and begin to up level and hold yourself differently, speak differently, be excited about the new projects in a different way. And that's what's always needed when it comes to showing up with your brand in a new way. Oh God, you're so smart lady. So give it wasn't us... just because we wanted to have a fun trip together. <laughs> I know, but, but that was fun too. <laughs> it was fun too. <laughs> So before we go, what is the one piece of advice you would give to business owners, whether they've been around for a long time or they're just starting out or they're not sure who they are about preparing for crisis? You have to have a plan. Like we all had plans. Remember we were in elementary school and we always had like the fire drill with <laughs> a plan in place of what to do. And yes, we thought they were cool as kids because you're like, cool, I get 30 minutes off of not having to be in class for that time. But the reason why we do it is because we are beings that tend to run in our subconscious mind. And when our logical mind shows up, it takes a lot of energy. And when you're already in fight or flight, that's not where your brain really functions is logical. So everyone knew that. And that's why we repeated these patterns. So that way, if the fire would ever happen, you'd hear the buzzer, exactly what to do. Your subconscious mind could take over. You didn't have to worry about thinking. Same holds true with your breath. You have to really stop and really plan out. What are you going to say? How are you going to react? How are you going to, you know, what offers are you switching and changing up? What is your messaging changing up to? You need to really kind of pre-think this. Now, a crisis management plan is much more than just thinking, but you can just simply take the basic step of writing down the craziest scenarios you could think of that could ever happen. Dinosaurs coming back to the world. Aliens going up on the planet. Uh, economies crashing. Some of them can be big, like the global pandemic, but some of them can just be 
you losing, you're, you getting a divorce all of a sudden that you weren't thinking, or your partner's income is no longer there and you have to move and you have a home office or something happens with your kid or something happens in your audience where, you know, there was an industry shift there that happens or a thought leader that so loves dies or whatever it could be. Yeah. Just begin to really write those kind of scenarios out and then begin to answer the question, what would you do if that happened? And you mm. out, you can just sit there and kind of think about the idea and the more specific you can be. And the more often you answer these questions consistently, you'll actually begin to use your subconscious mind to your advantage. And when those moments come, so maybe the dinosaurs aren't going to come back, but something else is maybe going to destroy our environment or something like that. So our lifestyle is going to change. It may be slightly different, but your subconscious mind says, I already have an answer to how I'm going to react to this. And that way, you are not going to be so reactionary. You are not going to be that animal in the cage, like going crazy. You're going to be like, nope, I know how to behave. I know what to do. And then you can really focus your energies instead of being in so much in the fear and, you know, you know, fight and flee kind of thing. You can actually focus on what needs to be done and take strategic action because you make conscious choices and thought it through prior. Yes. God, that is incredible wisdom. Thank you for that. It is exactly what people need to be doing and hopefully are doing now that this has hopefully. happened. Hopefully. We're not seeing it on social media, but hopefully. Hope yes, let's get right there. People. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I know we have so oddly little of it, even though we seem are supposed to have so much of it. I'm busy. I don't know how people are less busy. I'm like more busy. I'm like, how are you not more busy? I don't know, but thank you for taking the time. We are so appreciative. Um, and it is always wonderful to see your face. Right back at you. All right.